Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some items and we're going to start with a few jars. So this is just a, uh, not even a real wine bottle. I think this is just one that's made to look like one. And I'm going to start out by giving this um, one coat of the color Buttercream and that's a Dixie Belle color. And uh, so I just give it one coat because I'm going to go back and do a textured coat next. And I'm also going to paint that same color on this little bottle. Now I didn't use any kind of, uh, of a primer or a clear coat on this to make it stick. I just cleaned it, cleaned all three bottles really well with, um, with alcohol and I didn't have any problem with it sticking. Now with this one, I'm using the color Tea Rose. And again, I'm just putting one coat on it and I'll be adding texture to all three of these. And so here I'm taking that same buttercream and adding almost one half uh, of uh, baking soda to this. So it'll be half paint and half baking soda. And, and I might have went just a little bit less on the baking soda. I do want some texture, but I don't need a whole lot of texture on these bottles. Uh, and when you put this in here, it looks like it's a little too much and it, it starts to be real thick, but then as you stir it, it smooths out really well and it has a real good texture. So then I'll brush this over uh, both of the uh, f first two bottles. And I, I put it on here in strokes at first and then I start to kind of dab over those strokes just to add a little bit of texture and I go over this entire bottle like that. So I'll be doing that same process on the first and second bottle. Now these bottles could definitely be done without the texture. You could just use uh, straight paint uh, because like I said, I'm, I'm not using a whole lot of texture here, so it's just gonna make a subtle difference. Generally with bottles, I use some sort of a uh, clear coat on them to, to make the paint stick better, but um, the last time I did bottles, I didn't do that and I didn't have any issues, so I, I just decided to chance it today and it, it did really well. And then for the third bottle that I did the tea rose color on, uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of the tea rose to this textured buttercream. And uh, that's just gonna make this tea rose a lot lighter and change the color up a little bit. And so then it'll have some texture in it and it'll still be pink, but it won't be uh, too dark. And so this one will have even less texture than the other two. And then once these dry well, then I do spray them with some Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat. Uh, before I do the decoupage on them. And I could have done the decoupage first and then did that, but um, at some point you do need to um, seal your chalk paint. So like I said, I just did it before I did my decoupage. Now the, this is rice paper and I, I bought it this way with, uh, with actually four images on one sheet. And so I'm using three of those images on these bottles, uh, which will be my last three that I had on that sheet. And I'm gonna have to order some more because I really, really like these, um, this rice paper. And I'll add the link to that uh, in my description. And that's a link that I'll be using myself because I'm gonna definitely want to order some more of this. So I just decide which of those I want on each of these bottles and um, it's very quick and easy to uh, decoupage that on the bottle. And on these first two bottles, I'm only going to be putting an image on one side. But then for the third bottle, I'm going to take one image and, uh, and tear it into different pieces and use it on different parts of the bottle because the entire image fit on a good flat space on these first two bottles, but not on the second one. And as you can see that, or on the third one, as you can see that third image there has, uh, it just has a, um, 
an image that can easily be cut into pieces. But I don't like to cut anything. I like to tear it so that it has more of an organic look. And then it almost blends into your paint. Now I'm gonna keep these bottles uh, somewhat simple. I'm not gonna do all the technique that I do on some of my other bottles because I'm really liking the look of just the rice paper. But I'll still add some other embellishment to uh, to make it look even better. So like I said, once I get the images on these first two bottles, then I'll move on to that small one and, and then I'll tear that image apart and put some on one side and some on the other. Because with this one, I have a good flat, uh, two good flat sides actually, and I felt like both sides needed something. I'm loving the shabby, shabby chic look of these bottles. Uh, you can just take uh, almost any bottle and turn it into something really pretty uh, by using either transfers or some sort of decoupage. And like I said, the, the rice paper decoupage is just, uh, I don't know, I think it takes it to a whole new level. I just think that they're... Um, there really isn't much that looks better decoupaged with than rice paper. And you can decoupage with Mod Podge here. Um, I'm actually not. I know this is a Mod Podge container, but I ran out recently. And when I run out, all I use is just Elmer's glue. So I'm decoupaging with straight Elmer's glue and it works. To me, it works just as well as the Mod Podge. And it's, it's a lot less expensive. So here I am just taking the extra pieces from this little rice paper and just kind of placing them here and there on this bottle. And on this side, since I have the roses there, then I just use the different uh, script there on the top. And then the uh, on the other side, I used the little roses because I didn't have the roses on the back, so I just kind of tried to make it all be cohesive. Bottles are actually one of my favorite things to flip uh, because uh, the possibilities with them are endless. And I may do it some at some point. I may do um, a video on several different things that you can do with bottles, but um, I like to do some with different vignettes and. Uh, I love this little shabby chic look. And here all I've done is torn some fabric and the lace here, obviously I had to cut. You can't really tear uh, lace, but um, just I like that look of the torn fabric and I like to tear them kind of thin in this case. And I think just adding that little bit of lace uh, really help this bottle and I also use some tea towel on that. Now do the same thing with these other bottles except that obviously I go uh, a little longer on the on the uh, scraps of fabric because of the size of the bottle. But I want to make sure here that um, all the fabric that I use is, is real wispy and one of these uh, fabrics is just a sheer uh, curtain panel and I just ripped it pretty thin and you can rip that and I ripped it pretty thin and I really like the wispy look of that with this lace. So when you're thrifting um, those uh, what I would consider ugly curtain panels uh, don't need to be thrown don't need to be uh, left actually if you can get them at a good price because you can get a lot of fabric out of them and like I said you can rip that fabric really easily also and it just kind of has a real soft look uh, that I think looks really good with this so after I get the fabric tied around all of these then uh, I'm going to be making some hang tags uh, to add to them as well. And to make the hang tags, um, I'm 
using some flashcards that I got from the Dollar Tree. And those make really good hang tags because you could usually make a few out of one card. And um, the thickness is really good when you cover it with, uh, with some um, scrapbook paper. So I'm just cutting this uh, into uh, four. So I'll get two out of each card and I'm cutting two cards here. So I'm cutting the round edge off the end and then I'll cut that in half. I'm just kind of eyeballing it because obviously these uh, hang tags don't have to be an exact size. So once I cut it in half, uh, then I just slightly fold that top in half so that I get the middle and then I'm just gonna cut a little V off the edges of it there and that will make sure that both of your sides are the same. When you try to do that without folding it, it's, it's really hard to get those the same. And when, you, when they're not the same, it shows up a lot. So now here's this, the scrapbook paper that I'm gonna be using with these. And um, so what I'll be doing is just kind of wrapping these little cards in that scrapbook paper. So I'll just take some um, glue stick and I uh, put a generous coat of that glue stick on, on one side of the card and then place that down and give myself room in between to either tear or cut. Now I'm gonna be tearing, but uh, cutting these will be just fine. So I just glue that down and then I put a generous amount of glue on the other side and then I'll just kind of fold that over again, giving myself room to tear uh, but like I said, it, it would be easier and uh, not a problem at all just to cut these. So once I get these torn apart, then um, I can put my um, hole punch, a uh, hole in it with my hole punch and make tags out of them. And here I'm just using some ink and distressing around the edges just to give it more of a distressed look. And then I'm gonna take this book page here that I've just taken out of an old book and I'm gonna uh, stamp some uh, roses on, on it and tear those roses out and uh, distress around that little piece and glue that to the tag. And then I'll take one piece of that torn fabric and uh, and loop it through the hole to make a hang tag. So I'll just fold it in half and put the loop through the hole and then thread the tails through the loop. And uh, then you can just tie that on. But before I tie those on, I did some uh, stamping of a little script on the bottom or on the back rather uh, just to kind of keep that back from being plain. And that made some really neat little hang tags. And I just love how these bottles came out. Now I think they would display really well on someone's dresser or in their bathroom. I just think it's a really sweet, uh, shabby chic look. And I couldn't decide which was my favorite here, but I think if I had to say, it would be the one with the yellow flowers because I just really love the look of it. But I think they all work really well as a set also. And then for the third item, um, I'm gonna do something a little more unconventional and I'm gonna make over a little wooden rocky horse. So this one is not the size that someone that a child could actually uh, ride it's actually more for decor but this one has seen better days and um, it's not attractive at all i don't think so now i'm just cutting all this i don't know if it's wool or what it is but i'm cutting all the mane and the tail off uh, so that i can kind of start from scratch with this and then this, uh, this particular horse had uh, some 
uh, some wooden eyes that kind of were raised a lot and it was just more of an 80s style look and didn't like it at all. So I took it outside and gave it a heavy sanding to get rid of that raised eye there. I guess that's an eye. And because I disturbed the finish on this, then um, I ended up having to do a uh, primer coat on this. And I just used the Boss, which is a Dixie Belle product to help eliminate bleed through. And this one had the little screws, so I just took some air dry clay and put that clay in there and let that dry before I painted this so that I didn't have those little holes there. So I did that on both sides. And then, like I said, once that dried, then I took it outside and gave it a um, heavy sanding on the face. And, but I didn't, I didn't touch the finish on the rest of this. I just gave it a good cleaning. But like I said, because I messed up that finish there and disturbed it, then I'm gonna get some bleed through there. I don't have any doubt. So. Uh, this is called Boss, and it just is supposed to block um, bleed through from coming through or stains. So I gave it a coat of that and let that dry well, and now I'm giving it two coats of the color Buttercream. I know this looks funny without a tail or a mane, but we're going to take care of that, and we're going to give this a really shabby chic look. And I thought about white here and decided I wanted to kind of warm that white up just a little bit. So I used the color Buttercream here also. So I'm not worrying about that mess that I didn't, wasn't able to get cut off on the mane or the tail because uh, I'm going to be covering that up anyway. So I just painted right up to that and um, then I can move on to my next step. And like I said, I did have to give it two coats. So now I'm going to add some um, more of a French country style stamp to this. So this is the redesign set uh, called Icy Paris. And if you watch me long, you know that I really use this a lot. And because I didn't want that whole stencil there, I taped some of that off before I inked it up and pulled the tape off. And then that's an easy way to just get a partial stamp because the whole stamp wouldn't fit there where I was putting it. And I'm just kind of randomly placing these and I'm using just black stays on ink. And I'm just kind of random, randomly placing these at, because I just want to give this more of a French country look. And there I am taping off this one, the, the part that I don't want. And then you'll see I ink that up and pull that tape away and then you don't get ink on the other part. So once I get uh, enough stamping on this, and this is a personal choice here, just put however much you think looks good and whatever stamps that you have. And then, um, and then I give this a heavy distress coat. So I just, or not a heavy distress coat, I take it outside and use my orbital sander and uh, just give it a real good distress. And now we're gonna start to build the tail. And I've just torn some fabrics and this was a thicker lace, this pink was, that I had to cut strips from because I didn't want it thick, I wanted a thin. And, and then I've ripped some fabric, just different types of wispy fabric. And I'm just gonna kind of, um, these are like maybe 12 inch pieces. And, and then I'm gonna tie them together in the middle. And then that will be my tail. And then I just glue that to where the other tail was. And I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use just regular wood glue type bond, I think is what I use on this. Uh, and then, so that it'll hold for a while, or permanently actually, but uh, I'm gonna use some hot glue to help it stay while that dries. And I'm just kind of giving this a little haircut here, just kind of evening it, evening it up some, and it doesn't have to be perfect because a little bit of wispiness is, is good. So once I've got it trimmed a little, then like I said, I just glue it in place and that will be the tail and it's 
a very simple tail and you can make it as full or as uh, thin as you want it but I wanted it pretty full I think this would be really pretty to decorate in um, a nursery for a little girl I've made several of these and you can do even the full-size ones that they ride on you just have to make sure and get everything glued in place uh, well so that it's it's sturdy but I've also made them with the little bitty um, the little bitty rocky horses I've even did them with the ceramic ones uh, as long as the tail works out that's the problem that I usually have with the smaller ones is maybe they have a, they have a glass tail that uh, would be hard to hide but the wooden ones are just the best uh, to do this with so I'm just kind of placing my tail so that it hangs the same on both sides and then uh, and then for that mane it's a little bit a little bit more difficult but really not bad at all so you're just going to take a piece of string uh, that is longer than the area between the ears and the body and that'll make sense when I when I attach it but I'm just tying uh, several probably six to eight inch uh, pieces of fabric uh, really close together all the way down that string so you just keep adding till you get it full and you get it the length that you want it uh, and then you're going to take that and glue it down the whole area of the mane and I didn't mention that I did uh, seal this paint after I finished with my stamping. I sprayed some of the uh, Rust-Oleum clear matte finish on it to seal that chalk paint in. So now we're going to cover up this ugly stuff that I left on. And I'm just using hot glue for this because it's going to be fabric to fabric. So it's going to hold really well. So I just kind of hold the fabric back out of the way and glue glue it down the middle and making sure that I don't leave any of those strings underneath the glue and you'll see as you do it it'll make sense as you're gluing it on you're just going to kind of uh, try to make sure that you have fabric on both sides uh, of your horse and it seems a little more complicated than it is it really is very easy to do and uh, and the more you work with it, the more you'll see that it, it's very doable, even for someone who uh, thinks that they can't do this. Once you get that all glued down, then you're just gonna take your, uh, your little fabric strips and pull them down on both sides so that you have plenty of fullness on both sides before you trim um, any of the excess away because we're going to be giving this a little haircut also now you could take this further and maybe tie a bow at the top of your um, at the top of your tail but uh, I felt like on this size rocky horse that all this fabric that I've got going on was plenty and so I just didn't want to risk overdoing it but you'll be amazed at the difference that this is going to make on this horse. So you took an 80 style um, horse that, um, like I said, had definitely seen better days. And I think it just turned out really cute when, it's, when it was finished. Uh, some other things that you could probably do to this that I didn't is uh, maybe take some clay molds and add some more dimension to the wood on your on your little horsey but like I said I just kept this one a little bit more simple and because it was so small and now that I've got all my fabric on then I'm just kind of placing it uh, placing the fabric on both sides and then I'm just going to take my scissors and trim that mane uh, at an angle and you'll see what, what I'm talking about as I do it. But just take the time to make sure that you get 
your fabric kind of evenly distributed on both sides. And you may have to glue here or there to make sure that it lays the way you want it to, but you don't want to glue it down too much because you want it to have that fluffy look to it. And because you use so much fabric here, I wouldn't use my good ribbon on this uh, because uh, that could get very pricey. But like I said, if you save uh, old uh, material and maybe old curtain panels, like I said, or um, maybe old, old clothing that has lace on it and you just kind of cut your strips of lace, I honestly think that looks better than uh, using lace ribbon because it has um, more of a uh, tattered look to it and and I think that just looks a lot better. And here I am trimming at an angle and that gives it more of a, a pony look. So I do that on both sides. And this is the point where you'll just kind of go over it and uh, brush it out with your fingers and trim where you feel like something looks like it doesn't belong. The tail, I guess, is, is the hardest to determine what you need to cut. Uh, but one advice that I can give you is don't cut the tail too precise and, and definitely don't cut it too short because you'll start to lose your, your natural look. And it just, it isn't, it doesn't look nearly as good that way. But I think this little horse turned out so cute. And like I said, you can, you can change it up um, in a lot of different ways, but I just really like the way this one turned out. And this might be the quickest bottles that I've ever done. And um, I think I like them as well or better than many that I've done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.